to Light in the Attic Records, Los Angeles. Nice to meet you. This is our, this is our spot over here. Um, this is our wall of our annual zines we do, starting about five years back. Is this the first one? Yes, the first one illustrated by a very good artist in Seattle named Drew Christie. I actually did the second one too, Christopherson. Mm -hmm. and, uh, he does a lot of our art. Mm -hmm. And uh, over here is Patrick McCarthy from Lightning Hi guys. Hey. How's it going? Uh, he's in the uh, incredible band called the Zigzags. He's also the project manager at Lightning Attic. So Patrick oversees all the uh, helping out with the manufacturing and dealing with the designers, um, oversees the social uh, networking stuff, and uh, about two billion other. Oh, a lot of responsibility. He's been, he's been overseas working on some, some secret projects uh, in Asia and just got back two days ago. So he's, he's crazy jet lagged at the moment. Yeah, so it's feeling pretty weird. Excuse his weirdness. <laughs> yeah, still, he's still nice. Still uh, <laughs> we have the uh, iced tea power when uh, the day gets kind of a yeah. little uh, quiet. We need to pick me up. This is our, <laughs> this is our own version of math or whatever you want to call yeah, it. Show, show, us, show us what's playing. Like, um, uh, yeah, this we uh, Christian Bland from the Black Angels sent us a nice package of some music from his label. Uh, what else do we have? Some Lubin Brothers. Um, we recently reissued part of our modern classics label with a label called Medical Records. We did a reissue of Seafield um, with a great band from England. Mm -hmm. uh, Burger Records, the wonderful guys there gave us some, some recent things. This is a killer African record that we distribute, um, a group called Blow. Uh, and uh, lots of other stuff in here, The Only Ones, and Truth County, and The Ghetto Boys. Featherbeard, yeah. really cool dude from LA, very talented guy. Uh, this is his record that just just uh, came out, or just about to come out in a month? Couple weeks, a couple yeah. weeks. Mm -hmm. Really cool band. He's, you know, kind of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, but mm -hmm. inc incredibly talented guy. So there's kind of no one like him. Oh, yeah. Nice one. Are you playing a ukulele? Or? I think there, right, Patrick? It's like a ukulele? mini, it's, it's like a it's mini a, guitar. It's or a ukulele, yeah. Okay. He plays like a baritone. It's kind of so it's like a deeper, like a, it's a little bit deeper. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you can get a uh, more iconic cover than no, that. Yeah. I mean, it's he like wrote all of it. he's <laughs> me out of flowers. I mean, it's it's yeah. pretty epic. Amazing. Pretty epic. <laughs> cool. Uh, Patrick can show you some of these, but he just got back from a trip overseas in Asia and picked up some kind of. Yeah, I went to like the best record store <laughs> ever. Where did he go? This guy named Vinyl Hero. It's in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong, in uh, Sham Shui Po. You have to get a, you have to get a private, um, you can't just show up. Keep it like that. This is the place if you're ever in Hong Kong. It's almost worth going to Hong Kong. Where do you find it? I mean, is this, can we put it on the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He'd love it. Yeah, yeah. Great guy. It's, uh, it's in his apartment. The guy, um, his name is Paul. He's Vietnamese. And uh, he, considers it his like job to preserve vinyl history in Hong Kong. Like so like about thirty years ago people were throwing out their records when you know CDs started happening. So Hong Kong's always been a very wealthy city. And so people would just throw away their their records and he like picked them up on the street and he started selling them in like a little you know like a little uh, street cart, you know, thing and the cops kept busting him and you know, giving him a hard time. So he got in a he moved into an apartment, he sold his motorcycle, he sold all this stuff to go in an apartment. And uh, so basically there's like 50,000 records in a 400 square foot apartment and he has supposedly another 100,000 in storage. Oh, wow. And it's like, 
it's crazy. I mean, he's like just climbing on top of records. Like Hong Kong. All right. Yeah, it's I'm gonna, I'm gonna write down the address. You should, yeah, you should. Yeah. You, yeah, you gotta write it down. It's like he's the sweetest guy in the world. Like I brought him all these Light in the Attic records, and he was like totally like hugging me. He was like so thankful. And just some of the ones here's I got. A, here's a few of the lines. Can you see them? Yeah. Paul Parker Desire, I think, is a definite must. Yeah. <laughs> that that I didn't even have to listen to that one. I just, <laughs> I just knew that record was for me. And this one, this was a gift to me. Yeah. This is my gift as well as a Popeye action figure. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it's like kind of kind of sixties kind of uh, I don't even know how to describe it. We just listened yeah. to it the first time the second get. Nice. This is uh, Jennifer Moss who does our website. She's our she's built our website for I've handled it for about the last eight years. She's also my lovely wife. Um, she made a documentary called Weedle's Groove. Okay, so the, yeah, the CIA. Yeah, the show yeah, about that's Jennifer and I met during that project nine years ago. She's the one that directed the film and mm -hmm. put it together. So we uh, kind of spanned the length of our courting before we got married. We got married pretty much just like two days before it finished, or before we finished it, and that's a premiere. It took about what, wow. seven, five, six it's years? Five, yeah. yeah, and it premiered in Memphis. Wow. And like stacked people were there at the premiere. It was really oh, epic, man. and that was our honeymoon. So it was, uh, it was nice. Amazing. It was really a pretty uh, epic all around. But yeah, all Supreme. You know, he was the one that started that whole idea. We didn't believe that that scene even existed, and he opened our eyes up to it pretty quickly by hearing all the tracks. And yeah, working on some more stuff. He just keeps finding more and more tracks. But over mm -hmm. here, this is actually. Part of the Weedles Group project, um, Cold Bowl Together, and Cooking Bag, playing in Portland in uh, early 70s. It's just a killer poster that I believe Tony Gable from the band Cold Bowl Together designed. Uh, and, uh, what is this over there? This is a, a label we like um, out of Colorado. This is this one that was great. It's um, Patchnell Staten from Weedles Group. She's that's Jimi Hendrix's casket. She was the only person to sing at Jimi Hendrix's funeral. Um, wow. And she was a gospel singer in Seattle, and she has a few tracks, a couple tracks on the Wheatles group, Comp, um, I Let a Good Man Go, and, which is a great one. There's uh, Michael Chapman, um, incredible British folk artist we've been reissuing. The 86 Mets, which are my all time favorite. Uh, these are just, um, you know, just uh, records that uh, just been listening to most recently. Are these yours? Like yeah, these are mine. Yeah, Cannibal Adderley, to Nielsen, Chris Mayfield. Let's see a few. Marcus Valle. Mm -hmm. Crazy Horse, the band. This is one of my favorite records. Music, mm -hmm. for, music for Big Pink, the band. Okay. What else we got in here? It's Beach Boys, Damon Gerardo, Look Your Love. Nardwar, can't go wrong. With Nardwar, you, you put on the <laughs> yeah. an album. It's an album. It's a band called the Evaporators. Uh, yeah, it's got all these dudes on it. It's kind of insane. He's a character. This is a really cool label we distribute called Strawberry Rain. Um, they work a lot of times. They work some of the stuff with Egon, but uh, just a lot of cool. Like this is really incredible Indonesian. Um, Oh, yeah. I mean, just the, some of the stuff they find is incredible. The tour continues. Oh, wait. Poster. Important one. Yes, the Rodriguez searching for Sugar Man. This is cool. This is the Wheels Groove poster on the night of the release party in 2004. That was a uh, special evening. A chop suey in Seattle. This is a uh, proclamation from the city of Seattle announcing Weedle's Group Day, September 4, 2010. Uh, kind of blew everyone's minds, including <laughs> our own. Right. And uh, yeah, one of, one of our early projects was Lila. It was the first major black porno soundtrack. Supreme and Sure Shot from the Sharpshooters turned us on the record. Um, we did a condom uh, in celebration of the release. Uh, we had a release party in Seattle, a place called the Rebar. And um, if I can get this open, I can show you the condom. But yeah, it's a, it's a killer soundtrack. Egon wrote the notes. And um, 
may have to fast forward this part. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so open it up here. So here you see the uh, Lila condom. This is purple. It's about 03, still not used. <laughs> um, the back pulled off, so it was like the flyer for the show. Oh, the sharpshooters, and it was really cool. Oh, nice. Turn it, Yeah. Can you open it again? Yep. I think it's the only one we have left. This is Jack. He hand, Jack Stills, he handles all the, wears many hats, social networking, radio, mm -hmm. uh, office man. Um, what else? I'm forgetting it's probably six or seven licensing yeah. as well. Jack mm -hmm. of all trades. Jack of all trades, mm -hmm. like I said. Um, this is Jess Rod over here. Um, oh, hello, Jess. She, you know her from Dust and Grooves. Yeah. Jess is the publicist at Light in the Attic. And um, this is over here, Will. But also oh, very talented. <laughs> yes, very yes, talented. Yes, yes, I apologize. Yeah. So she, here's some of her art. Um, Jess is illustrated many things over the years. We've been lucky to work with her on many Light in the Attic illustrations, yeah. the Country Funk comp with Zach Cowie and many other things. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and over here is Will, there Ivy, our, our wonderful intern, who's joined us earlier this year. How's it going? Hey. He's, just looking, <laughs> he's checking out some internet porn right now. Yeah. <laughs> <It's cool. laughs> You're not <laughs> paying me, am I right? That's the time of the day. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's about, you know, 145. You know. Do, you have, do you have a yeah. quota? Yeah. 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 Well, there's never a bad time. Yeah. <laughs> all set. Now he's working on some mechanical licensing to be all fair okay. and honest there. Mm -hmm. um, in here we have... Uh, oh, wait, wait. I just want to ask you. So, uh, Patrick just brought me that record from China. Apparently she's like the Donna Summers of China. Looking mm -hmm. forward to checking that Looks disco good. out. Yeah. You, you're, staring, you're doing a staring cop. Right. The good news is there kind of a poster comes inside, so I oh, can wow. just hang it above my bed, you know, for sweet dreams. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Sassy little lady. And this is our kitchen area next to our archive area, so, um, you know, uh, we license most of our recordings, so when we get tapes, you know, we borrow them, do good transfers, and then send them back to wherever mm -hmm. they go after we've remastered them and done all the things we need with them. So in here is our archive of each project, starting at the beginning with yeah, Last Poets and Lila and Sharpshooters, etc., and the summer records. We've put out about 125 records in 11 years. Um, and the warehouse is in Seattle. Right? Warehouse in You're Seattle, yeah, that's where it's about a 4,500 square foot, um, you know, warehouse distribution hub, and you know that's uh, kind of our thing. You know, this wall of test pressings. Oh, yeah. I don't know how exciting that is, but it is actually. We try to keep uh, we try to keep everything. Yeah, uh, it's hard to be organized, but we do the best we can. <laughs> Uh, especially doing reissues, I mean, it's it can be you know you could wait three years for someone to get a photo. So when we get that photo, we got to make sure it's documented, yeah. archived. This is a uh, Honey Limited, which is a the Hazelwood Project girl group that um, we just put out. So is that our latest release? Yeah, it's our latest release. It's from about '68. It was on Lee's uh, Lee Hazelwood Industries label. The big thing we're working on is a box set for Christmas. It's like a it's the history of LHI, like a coffee table book with a soundtrack. Um, that's keeping us very busy. Okay. Yeah, but that's it. That's okay. uh, that's light in the attic. Uh, thank you for visiting us. We do love the dust and grooves. Um, yeah. All thank right. you again. Sure. <laughs> should I walk? Should I walk you the door? <laughs> <laughs> no